It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Welcome. You're listening to Bucked Up with Sam Buck. Welcome to the Bucked Up Podcast, where we like to play music for homeless men in elevators. That's uh, that's the vibe that we give off here. I mean, you look like someone that would be doing that, so. <laughs> DJ, like the most, DJing an elevator. You have the loudest fucking outfit I've ever <laughs> seen. I mean, bright yellow North Face pants, not pants, shorts, very short shorts. And then a <laughs> Wyoming bright orange shirt with fucking the lettering is lime green. I mean, this I, is a Kanye West shirt. Oh, well, this is from cool, bro. <laughs> fucking sick. That is a uh, God damn. OK, but I, you that's a lot coming from you. You're always in a I mean, you're always in Hawaiian shirts. I was about always. to. I, not in the winter time. That's fucking. Retar- that's stupid. You're in Holy. Hawaiian jacket. <laughs> you know, I mean, I do have some. Uh, I've got a couple pieces of fashion that are you know ridiculous. Like uh, I have a suede jacket that's got those like '70s fucking lapel. Like it looks ridiculous. You but would slay pussy in the '60s and '70s. I would slay pussy in any decade. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, but if you were in the '60s yeah, or '70s, way- you'd be swinging, swinging ladies off the dance floor. Every- also, way less consent back then. <laughs> It was a questionable gray area that used to be acceptable, but now society doesn't want to play the game anymore. That's not what I was saying. I know. I mean, it's not what I'm saying. That's what history has told us. Okay. It is true. It is. I come on, Sam. No, we're we're we're, we're joshing here. We're we're goofing, bro. We, we're goofing. We're having a you good would, time. I'm just saying. You look like like when I see pictures of men in the '60s and '70s. It, like you're the vibe that I see. I do have good hair. I you do have a, good, yeah. The hair is a big part of it. <laughs> it's, it's straight, but it's not too straight. It's got. I mean, like you know, like how Hercules would look in yeah. uh, the the Kevin Sorbo version. Yeah. I don't. I've never had it that long, but like you gotta have a little bit of floof to it. Did you, you ever get I mean? jacked? No, I've been uh, close to ripped. Never been jacked. I feel like you jacked would just would, you could dude, be. I mean, it would be over. You'd be in the community play for Hercules immediately. You oh, could. I mean, well, I got these big ass Gary Busey teeth, so that's <laughs> definitely going to set me back. Let me adjust my balls here. Jesus Christ! Uh, <laughs> this is a video podcast. Oh, Please don't right. show Fuck, your. You right. have shorts on. Don't yeah. show your balls on Whip the podcast. Out here, yeah. <laughs> I just... sat in gum. <laughs> That'll be a good time. <laughs> I. I, you know, I grew up by the beach and the amount of old man balls I saw as a child outside, like they just, they would pop out of their swim trunks. And I never thought. Were you like snorkeling around them? Just like, no, they'd just be lounging at the beach like this and a ball would pop out. Okay. I see. I've only had that experience once and it was one of my football coaches. (laughs) <laughs> fucking coach chafin this like big lion coach had little chair they had to bring around with him and he would put it down and, like his knees would come up to here <laughs> and just want like i mean the ball it came, and it was like fucking like a solid six inch sack you know what i mean so you tell i can't, I can't believe he hasn't he's not feeling the air you know hitting into it and shit it was like a, a pendulum swinging about and dude every the best part's like you dude have you seen coach chafin's legs oh my god they're so jacked and then it was oh Oh, man ball. I'm worried about what my balls are going to look like Why? if they're as hangy as they are right now. Oh, whoa, <laughs> buddy. That's a, that's a statement to make. I, how, I had what? a girl once be like, <laughs> are they, pe- you have huge balls. Oh, that's not, that's manly. That's a pretty cool And I was balls. like, maybe I don't have a small dick. I just have big balls. And it's all about perception, it's right? all No, I'm a big person. So even if I have like an above average dick, it just looks average on me because I'm well, big. When, when you're fully erect, does it look, does it match the... Uh... Yeah, it, when it's fully erect, it matches. But okay. I am... Uh, More of a grower oh, and not uh, a shower? 100. I feel like if you looked at me, you could just point and say, you're not a shower. You, I don't I, give you know, off I, show or energy. You know what? You're, here, you know, and I would say you're a nice guy, and just for uh, don't take this the wrong way. For as ugly as you are, you've got a lot of confidence. So I would say that you, I would not be surprised if you were walking around with a fucking schlong, bro. <laughs> How about you? Well, let's talk about your dick size. I got a good now. dick. I got a you really got a good, good dick. dick. Not a great dick, but a pretty good. Uh, that's uh, people that have listened to my podcast before. Uh, I have an episode where just me and my wife. We took a, a bunch of Molly, I think it was, and just fucked all like all night. And then at like one o'clock, I was like, 
you want to do a podcast? He was like, yeah. <laughs> and we just talked about how much I fucked her and like how good it is and how many, it, it, I think it's she, just the cuck of a podcast. Oh, <laughs> Anyone so, listening is just getting cucked. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's like, hey, man, here's how to do it. Here's how to make a woman uh, down there. It's, uh, it's, that's what all the vaginas make. You can go, like, <laughs> this is not where, this is not where, but like, I, the most I've ever had in one day for sex is 12. Yeah, I, I don't think I've, I, I mean, dude, we've, I probably right around there. That's, I think I've got But the I had digits, someone be 12. like, after three, I can't do it. And I'm like, oh. what is, yeah. what is going on? Those with are people you? that have never experimented with drugs. Those, those are people on antidepressants. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing, man. I've never like had the issue of like not being able to get boners. I'm, I'm turning 30 this year. So I'm hoping that doesn't just come out of nowhere. Still wake up in morning wood, fucking threw it to my wife this morning after I found the boat, <laughs> hey! found the log in the bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's Wait, like, did you say after found a log? Found a log and it's morning wood, but oh, brother, you, know, you oh, like a shit in the bed. Like, <laughs> oh, you're like there's a shit in the we're bed. That means we're getting to no, it. Oh, <laughs> okay, you got we got an open highway. Let me slide in there now. <laughs> it's lubricated and everything. I mean, if you haven't gotten shit on your dick, you haven't lived. No, I actually, I think it's if you haven't gotten shit on your dick, then you're fucking a a clean woman in the ass that that respects you before you uh, no, fuck her. You got to take those chances in life, dude. Sometime. My wife, uh, oh, she's not gonna like this. <laughs> Is she gonna live? I hope she doesn't listen no, to my. She's not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> What's it? She, uh, she's, she's uh, as women should be. You, she's sub- self conscious about anal and shitting on me, so she's like, "Hey, let me know if you ever want to do anal, and I'll do an enema beforehand, mm. so that there's no chance." I lost, and I respect that. It's a great move. People say this isn't losing my virginity, but I'm going to tell the whole story and then you can, you'll understand why I say like I lost my virginity to anal. Not, <laughs> you put your dick inside of a person. I couldn't find my condom. I was 16. My girlfriend was 18. Right. It was New Year's Eve. I couldn't find my condom and she went, just stick it in my ass. And okay. I did. And then I found the condom later and I did oh. that. But that was the first time I had sex was just raw dogging in the butt. So I, I will take chances. I don't give a fuck. Sure. I mean, you're not really taking that much of a chance there. That's a pretty Catholic thing to do. It's nothing too special. But it wasn't because we were, it was because I couldn't find condoms. And she was like, well, we can't get pregnant in the butt. She was older than me. She was sure. more experienced. I mean, I can't just fucking, just, I don't know, wait then. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll go get a condom. A fucking, how hard yeah. is it to just go to a goddamn CVS or a, whatever they have? But in, now I'm a risk taker. I don't think sexual risk taking is the way to go in this new generation of uh, disgusting people. That's the other thing, man. Like, I know that our, our parents and our grandparents are more sexually reserved, but goddamn, they don't have as dirty dicks as uh, a lot of my buddies do. People have, do you have just, dirty dicked buddies? Oh, a bunch of dude, people are I've never gotten with shit. I don't I probably shouldn't admit this on the on my self-help podcast. Is but, this a self-help podcast? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Not by how, what we've how, talked about. How so are we far. helping? How are, <laughs> <laughs> it's as it's a self-help podcast as much as like Rogan is a self-help podcast. Okay, I just don't know how I get a lot of help from the opinions of SoundCloud rappers. But <laughs> who knows? Shay, fast guest. <laughs> is no. Shots of his is desired. <laughs> no, but I, I would rather not have sex than wear a condom. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Like, I would rather just do ha- have like give head and receive head, and then just not. What have if that's to wear not a on? Condom? That's not on the table, and it's just no sex or sex with a condom. I've never had that situation. Well, that's come. the situation we're, we're talking about here. <laughs> right now. Yeah. If I'm gonna fuck you, I need a, no, I need not, a I mean, condom. You need a lot more than a condom. <laughs> you need about a million condoms that you can sell for a dollar a piece, and then we'll talk, okay? <laughs> but before that, yeah. No, if if of course, of course, I will wear one, and I have worn one in situations. But I'm just saying, the old like. I don't care about hooking up that much. So I would like, unless it's a situation where I really want to be in it, I just don't care enough. Yeah. I can tell by the way you uh, dress that that is uh, how you approach things. (laughs) 
It's true though. I, I, yeah, I know. It's, I heard at a young enough age that like hooking up is just your mind playing a trick on you for wanting to like spread your seed and have kids. No, it's pretty cool actually. I, 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 no, <laughs> I've had. I, I, now I feel like the guy who's trying to explain that he's not getting, racist. Not getting pussy's I, fucking pretty I cool actually, a bro. Lot, but I like got it. It's like drinking. Like I drank enough that I got it out of my system that I don't need to get sure. ran. Well, like I've fucked enough that I got it out of my system. I don't need to be like hooking up five nights a week now. yeah but as somebody that is uh happily married with being uh gonna be with my wife for 11 years that's oh crazy God. congratulations yeah. thank you i oh, know 10 years God damn it. It's, 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 Hopefully yeah, she doesn't listen digits. to this podcast. I, I was like, I'm not, I was like, you're giving yourself way too much credit here. Uh, yeah, and I don't cheat on her. So, like, I genuinely don't get to have the chase anymore. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't even miss it. But, dude, when I was getting laid when I was younger, man, it was fun. It is cool. And it is a, it's a good time, especially if you do it correctly and you're not, like, you know, quote, breaking hearts or being, like, a scumbag yeah. about it. And you're just, you know, banging other sluts because you're also a <laughs> slut at the time. And it's like, I let's all slut out. Wait. I'm having okay. I'm having a realization right now. Where are you on the self help? So podcast? I, I am. I've been living with my mom, so I can't be slaying living with my mom. So maybe I've convinced myself that yeah, now that like before it's you not even worth try, it. Because like, yeah. like when I was at when I was in college, like you have your own room, you can do yeah. whatever you want, and that's fun. But when you live with your mom, you can't like. There I'd rather just not like. When is she not gonna be here? Like, am I gonna fuck while she's teaching? Like, I don't. Yes. It's not worth. That's it. definitely a subconscious thing that's happening. Is you're almost, you're just in your head. You're defeated <laughs> before it's even happened. But that's why I've been able to do a podcast two times a week. Is because it's like I'll put my energy into that. Oh, I'll chase I, the guests. I don't have to chase the, these whores. That's cool. But I mean, but when you go out to New York next time, or you're doing that, you know what I mean? That's the time to slay it. You well, know I mean? was thinking about. I can't. I'm not. We were talking about this before, and I'm not giving details on the podcast or anything, but I did have an opportunity to arise where I might move to New York and leave home for the first time. Ooh. And I was th that the thought process is like, I'm going to have a place to fuck again. Like that was honestly like other be. than the amazing opportunities of living in New York and all that, just that was like a thought process that went through like, I was like, Oh, I will actually have like a place to do other stuff. Yeah. But like, that is like a thing that is for sure. And that new place probably doesn't have your mom living there, which is going to be great. You <laughs> that know? is true. That is true. <laughs> Top it is. Notch. But so my mom was convinced I was gay growing up. I was going to finish that sentence <laughs> with the exact thing. I was like, fuck, he's already, I, I missed it. And it was, I had this moment of like, wait, did I, did I make that happen? Did I like, Spoke did, it I, into will, yeah, did I just will that to, into reality? So when I had like girlfriends for the first time, this is another reason why I don't care about, like, she was like, thank God it's not a guy. He can have girls sleep in his room. Like, I don't care. As like, okay. So I would just like at 16, I could have girls sleep in my room. So it was just like. <laughs> Like, it's, like <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. It is cool, but it is funny. It was like, <laughs> thank God it's not. It's, Why it's, did she think you were so? Gay? Have you listened? Have you looked at me or heard my voice? Like, yeah, I wouldn't say gay. I don't know why, but like, gay guys are usually. I used attractive. to have like a Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, gay guys are in shape and they have good opinions and good tastes. <laughs> you know, like. No, they also dress better than this. <laughs> I've, I, this when I was younger. Okay, actually, I used to only dress in Vineyard Vines. Do you know what? You're not from Mass, so no. you, those are the bright pink shorts and the t-shirts with the whale well, on it. Was buying you the clothes. I know. Why? So I was like, she was dressing me as this. She was painting me the picture she didn't want me to be. I, okay, so I mean, you know what? She's probably working her own shit out on, she on you. Is, she is. <laughs> but no, so it was like as like each can just sleep in the room. So I just got it out of my system. Well, so just the way you dress, like, she, did, she, did you ever make out with? I boys? used to have a Mickey Mouse voice. Like I used to have a like, like, like hey guys, like oh wow, okay, like well, it was just I um didn't have a lot of friends. Okay, <laughs> I, I, see, gay, gay guys are popular. <laughs>
I wasn't gay. I was just a loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting girls. So you weren't that much of a loser. Well, so what happened was or I were was they just a the loser. Girls no, they ever. were. So what happened was up until sophomore year of high school, I was a fat fuck. And then I lost like 60 pounds. And then I was still like the nice fat guy, but I was like 180. Okay, I'm nice. like 220 now. So I was 180. There I was just go. like, and so I was able to get more attractive girls for the, because I was like the nice guy. Uh-huh. I was, I felt like I was in a Taylor Swift music video. Like oh, I just like wow. let my hair down and took my glasses off. and I was just hot. <laughs> this was <sighs> before my hairline started receding or yeah, it was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just realized it is pretty. Uh, it's, it's it's cutting itself back there. Every it? single podcast with comedians, we talk about my hairline, <laughs> and I just like, I feel like that's what people like who don't listen to the rap episodes. You just listen to the episodes, think yeah. it's like a hair, like a hair loss podcast. Well, it's not a hair loss podcast for one of us. It's uh, <laughs> no, you have good hair. Gr- if I have great hair, actually, I just got a haircut. It's fucking yesterday. So. You have good hair. Never had ED. What I've never ED? had ere- ec- oh, erect. Oh. I've only had erectile dysfunction when the you- girl wasn't up to par. <laughs> that is, I'm being Ooh, honest. Wee. Like, oh, I've had that, but it was always from like being trash drunk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. I bet only one time, man. That was, that was a great but I've story. never had like. You want to hear fucking like a, this is one of the few times I was like a douchebag. Like, oh yeah, scummy. I'd love to hear that. This girl like uh, from Molokai. It's an island in Hawaii. It's a little less populated, and she was like, not. She was cute, but like gross <laughs> fucking nasty dirty girl yeah like great body though you know okay i know what you yeah and what uh, they have the rings right here yeah exactly dude <laughs> <laughs> i know what you're and talking like, about she fucking like like she's there's like a party going into her dorm and she like goes into a room but as she does she like like arm and then just touches my dick and i'm like all right i'm gonna fall into this mm-hmm. and we get in there and as a gentleman i am I'm like all right let me eat you out first because that's what i was doing back then and her pussy was so fucking gross <laughs> okay so I'm like trying to like I'm trying to like I'm, it, I just it I can't I'm trying to get hard so goddamn bad I'm already drunk too, mm-hmm. so I'm like I'm just I'm, it, the whole motions are happening and I'm like uh, hang on I gotta I gotta go I gotta get I gotta go to the bathroom so I, I literally feel like I have to throw up, and I get up out of the bed and I fall into her closet and just break the doors in half because <laughs> they're like <laughs> shitty dorm doors you know what I mean Yeah you just had a fucking chloroform yeah. cloth put to your mouth <laughs> I had to like, fuck it climb out of the thing go to the bathroom just puke in the fucking toilet. <laughs> Then he's left. I was like, all right, I'm going to take off. Sorry for not fucking. <laughs> that was my last Tinder hookup. Oh, it was man. at the beginning of quarantine. It was like, t- so I was broke. Uh, I went through a breakup the week before quarantine happened. And so two weeks before quarantine happened. So then like two months, a month into quarantine, I was like, I'm just going to whatever. I'll match someone with on Tinder and just out. like get it, you know. And so this Break girl, quarantine. I literally had to put on music to, like, so I she didn't hear me dry heaving while eating her out. Ugh. And then I I had vomited in the bathroom too. It was so, but you can't like, what do you say in that moment? This is a self help podcast, Sunny Dennis. What do you say in that moment? Do you want to? I mean, that's, it depends who you are. As a man. <laughs> that's just, that's why I'm glad I'm. That's why I'm glad I'm with a woman that has a fucking extremely clean vagina and butthole. Okay. <laughs> But both very important. It'd be weird if you had one really I'm nasty, really good, one yeah. clean. Oh, like God, I mean, they're right <laughs> next to each other. Yeah. So I think I at this point, you what's the situation you're in? Did you ask to be there? Are you there for a certain reason? Ask these to, your, to yourself. And, you know, <laughs> whatever the things line up as, you can be a dick if you want to be a dick. But just know, man, you better like she better have like thrown it at you and then like. <laughs> been aggressive and then had it like she's like shoving your face down there and you're like what the fuck is wrong like that's when you're allowed to flip out but if it's like you decide to go down and happen to discover this then you know sometimes we have to live with the decisions we make my good friend yeah and, uh, i mean marco polo i bet they didn't find everything they wanted on all their no, expeditions and i bet they found some shit they didn't want to find <laughs> that's what i mean on some of those expeditions. i i said i just said i had italy a po- i was gross I, it's a great excuse i was like i have a podcast yeah like why she was like oh okay i was like i have to go do a podcast oh God. mid mid me not being able to get it up mid me vomiting in the bathroom i was like i gotta go do a podcast See, you gotta I, leave i had the decency to be like hey i'm sorry my dick's not getting hard so i'm gonna i'm gonna dip on out of here i didn't blame her i was like oh i'm sorry it's just not working. no i told her i was like i said i'm, I'm trash and fucked up i'm not gonna be able to do it. like <laughs> you never blame her you, you can't blame them no you can't no. blame them even if it is like if they're just like 
if she spits up onto herself and like rubs it into her face, I'd still be like, I no, it's you know, hey, it's, something came up. Uh, I, it's yeah. true. You can't no, it's but th- that's a total. It's not the opposite. Well, way. I'm sure some of your fucking listeners. A couple, I, 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 there's got to be a couple incels out there that, that <laughs> peek in here and there. But it's like the the move of like people like like one. Ah oh, man, well. Ah. <laughs> Come on! Well, supposedly, like one of the comedians in Boston did when he was shot down by a girl, where they just go, "Well, then fuck you, you dumb ugly bitch! I didn't even want to hook up with you anyway, you fucking idiot!" Oh. And it's like, how is that the move? No, you no. Just got reject. I mean, dude, every time I've ever gotten rejected, it was always like, "Oh, sorry for fucking you. Ah, get away, get away!" And we walk away as quickly as possible. It's, yeah, no. Hope I- none of your friends saw it happen. The, the move. To do, well, fucking, what, what, what's your deal, then? Fuck you, really? You think you're like I? Oh, not even the confidence it takes to do that, but the lack of mental awareness. No, you can't. You can't freak because like you can't freak out because no matter what, no matter what in the back of their mind, they're like, oh, he can fuck me up if I don't like, you know what I mean? No. So if you get mad at them, if you freak out at a girl, they're going to get scared immediately for like, no. they're going to get scared. I first of all, when you get. You, Freaking out shouldn't mean physically. I'm just saying, even just yelling or calling someone a dumb cunt. That's what I'm saying. That I, was, that's gonna put a girl at on edge. Any like you don't. That's never gonna get you a good situation. Like, oh, I absolutely free, like, agree. Freak it out at a girl never works. Yeah, but I don't think it's because they think they're gonna. Because there's people that are men that are not intimidating. Where there's women that are like, true. oh, I could beat the fuck out of this little dork. And it's I guess like, that's true. And that is the guy, like the bagel bosses of the world. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> and it just yelled yeah. at a woman for like rejecting them. And it's like, I don't, literally, they're like, some people are just like, no, men are gross douche losers. It doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be a physical alter. It's sometimes just like, man, you guys are just, I, 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 I see those guys too. And it's like, fuck, we get rid of you. We, you and the, and the TikTok dancers at the same time, let's <laughs> knock everyone out of one fucking fell swoop. It's insane. Any any man who's like man, any dude who's over like the age of forty who still like pops his collar on his shirt and he's bald and, and it's like I see him on the subway all the time. I'm like what the fuck do you? And then I watch him like walk up. He goes, "Oh, you look really beautiful today." It's like, what do you what do you what do you oh, think is gonna happen? Bro? Yeah, I what do you re- like? You, you're done, dude. You, you life passed you by. I'm sorry. Whatever you have is what you had, but like, move on, bro. Get out of here. You ever work in food service? I, yeah. I've, so I've you, know, that's like it. food service is where I first realized like how creepy old dudes are to young chicks. Yeah. Like, like the things that they would say, like even it's with insane. like even like whenever like a line cook dates like a hostess or something like that. Oh, that, like, yeah. What the, why is everyone okay with this? Like, no, or just like sitting. I was at a show and the there was a like oh, attractive waitress. And like this table of fat, gross old dudes, and every time they came over, they'd say something. And it's like, I don't know if it's the delusion, like they think it's gonna work, or that they're like, we're so old that we don't give a fuck. We'll literally just say gross shit to this girl. I think it's bowling. It's part of it's just it's the only time that they literally are around a pretty girl that they can talk to because their wives probably aren't like. Oh, they're no, (laughs) yeah, no. (laughs) First of all, no one over the age of forty is hot. Like. (laughs) Sorry, ladies. It's not happening. I've seen some over. I've seen I mean, some yeah, forty year olds. Seen them with their clothes off? Yes. I have. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> You're right. You're yeah. right. They can be hot, but there's always. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like I know that's everyone fucking. Their stomach always looks like static on a television. Yeah, man, it's the fucking. The, even no matter what, you're not gonna get that little bit of fucking arm fat there. <laughs> the thighs just sag a little. It's no one. You never. You've, God forbid you've had a kid or two. That's what I mean. No one. They have the, the stomach skin oh, that man. looks or a C-section scar. You've never, never banged a chick with a C-section scar. Thank. I've God. never banged a chick with a C-section scar, but I have banged chicks who have had kids. See, I, I have as well. Which is equally gross. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not here's. The, I'm not saying that you're gross. I'm saying that having sex with women that have had kids is gross. Man, my wife's. That's the thing. My wife's just like, we're having a kid soon. I'm like, all right. Do you think you would be a good dad? I'm gonna kick ass. I mean, yes. I mean, you foster but, kittens, yeah. and the way you just gently picked up. There was like you. You're fostering the cutest cat. Yes. Coffee you just beans. Gently picked it up and just kissed it and moved it into the room. It's a her, was, first of all. Or she. I'm yeah. sorry. It was. <laughs> you're not gay with your cat. I was. <laughs> you're like it's a fucking. I was making out with a chick. I was kids. No, I would kiss a little boy cat if I had one here. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it, I see you as a good dad. Absolutely. Just... The only issue I have is financially. Mm. That's where I'm like, because even like, I'm like, dude, can I just. And there's... drug days. You can't have just a day to trip. when you're I mean, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> kid. <laughs> That's, I'm not going to like do it like on his birthday or something like that. <laughs> like, I'm going to look at where it's like, oh, there's a field trip. So it's like an overnight thing. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, you're going to, you're going to sleep over at your friend's house. Hey, I'd be like my wife. I'm like, Hey, you got in case he wants to come home. You have to be the person, but <laughs> dad, yeah. Dad's going to be in the yard. Even if the kid comes, what's that? Oh, dad's just in the yard. He's talking to one of his friends on the phone. He's not, his phone's on his hand. Well, it, he's got his headset in. It's okay. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> you're like, just screaming in the backyard. <laughs> even when I, if I'm, I'm howling, I'm just laughing. I'm yeah. having a good time. I'm a, Do you have I, bad trips? I have, but it usually comes from when I'm like, aggressively drink at eh, this last uh year over quarantine I had a couple uh get i was fighting with my, me and my wife were fighting having a couple bad nights there and i would be like oh, fuck you i'm gonna go get trashed and i would just like uh, i would do acid like spitefully <laughs> <laughs> and like Never, yeah it would be fun for a while then there'd be a point where it would be like i'd kind of calm down and like look at my phone but like, <laughs> i'm angry and I'm like, why can't i just have love <laughs> <laughs> And that's where it's like, it's not, and then even like you do have like the break, not the breakthrough, but you, you're able to be like, all right, you're being dumb right now. Yeah. But just answer your phone and you're like, well, now I'm just tripping on acid and fucking a dumb comedian's yard in Quincy right now. And why don't those breakthroughs ever happen sooner? Oh, like when do. you're like, not, not at just in tripping, but just like in angry. Yeah. Like when you're angry in a relationship, like you can't get like, I wish you could get that, like, oh, I was dumb feeling immediately oh, instead of, like, yeah, it's what's, 30 minutes of screaming. That's smoke weed. <laughs> yeah. I figured that this, like, my wife literally had to be like, you're not allowed to go smoke weed in the middle of, of us fighting. I was like, why not? She's like, because you just apologize. And it's like, <laughs> I don't even feel like you're actually, like, appalled. You're not even listening. You're just up doing it to get it over with. I'm like, yeah. I Do you want me to yell at you? I cracked the code. <laughs> I've also, I've gotten pretty, I mean, like, so I've had to work through some anger shit this past, like, two years specifically. I, like, my wife was like, yeah, you're angry. I'm like, I'm like yelling at like world star hip hop videos and shit. I'm like, just, fr y y I don't know if you ever have this, but like when you look at activism and everything, you just get mad at the world. You're like, fuck, you just want to, yeah. you know, go to a billionaire's house and take their kids hostage and then, and then kill them anyway. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. I, I look, man, if I'm ever going to kill myself, it's going to be a very elaborate, like, I'm going to take Mitch McConnell with me. I'm like, that's the have whole. Have you planned it out? No, but I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> I also thought about like, like you know the Brooklyn Bridge, or not the Brooklyn Bridge, the really you know the, the yeah the, the, mm -hmm. yeah dude just like fucking making the biggest bomb you can in your car, driving in the middle there and fucking boom like I mean no one there's are there sleeper to, cells in Hawaii? No, I feel dude, like fucking, or like the other one is the other the, the big one. I'd be I get like six drones, just a good size explosive on all of them, and then fly them into like a football game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why like, fucking you could kill like probably a thousand people? Yeah, but like. Why not pick like? Because I always watch all these terrorist attacks, and I'm like the guy in the truck that kills like seven guys. I'm oh, like, yeah. really, dude? I'm not like I look at it like a video game every now and then. I'm like seven. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They're Low not score, playing. bro. And it's like I'm always like, they like the trucks for stuff. Everyone likes the fucking the box truck. That's the way to go. And I'm like, what? Why is no invest five thousand dollars into your mass murder? Get a class, uh, class D. What is it? The class D driver's class license D, yeah. to drive the eighteen wheelers. Invest your time. Well, even that, because you're just, I mean, good luck. For, yeah, those things don't turn. You know what I mean? So good luck I got to say, I've never had crowd. these thoughts. Oh, dude. For, every time I watch it, the first one, I was like, this is so fucking terrible. The, the bad ones are like, this is terrible. But when it's like a, like someone like, you'll see like someone try to like stab people and, a, and it's like, what are you even doing? That's why I listen why to gangster you... rap. That's why I like. No, no, no. Have you ever seen like someone in like the Middle East try to do like a mass? Like, they try to, oh, yeah, like, they just. Uh... But they kill like three people and it's mm -hmm. like. Wait until you have a gun. Like, That's not a smart person, though. Yes. That's someone who's having a mental breakdown. I agree, but I also the people that get the box trucks and try to do that too. I'm like, <laughs> fucking bad move, bro. Yeah. Like, and the whole I, I've also heard podcasters. People are like, why has no one ever tried the drone bombs? I was like, That's a good fucking idea. No, so the Steve, bridge one I have whenever I drive through there, I'm like, man, if my car, if I just like fucking, and then it's like take a step further, like I just packed like a bunch of shit in here. <laughs> Blow up like one of the biggest bridges in New York, fucking do some dark night shit. I, that no, would be insane. No, no. So Steve, okay, Stephen King has this thing, this uh, uh, essay he wrote where he's like, we like violent stuff because it feeds the alligators in our brain. 
like if we don't feed the alligators with like fucked up stuff like his mo- like horror movies or fucked yeah. up books or with me like very like violent descriptions and rap like uh, that feeds the alligators so i feel like i don't have those thoughts in real life oh no, no the thought is always how easy it is because you, you, i would drive by it and i'm like why is there not there's no like there's there's nothing to get a, there's nothing to stop it from happening here especially when you go across the, like, the bridges and shit i'm like or the sports games i'm like man i could have walked in you walk in i'm like they, they, the guy that pats you down i'm like he just goes to, to, i'm like i literally want to be like hey would you i don't have a gun but can you just fucking make me feel like you're doing a little better of a job like because I, I don't know. I, I always feel like I'm the guy. Movie theaters were the first place I saw shit go down. And I'm like, I'd, I'd look at the uh, the guy walking in and be like, oh, is that guy going to shoot the place up? Oh. Uh, okay, we're good. And then, like, sporting events. I'm amazed. That were you events. an anxious kid growing up? No, just the uh, the fucking the Joker kid. The one that shot up the movie, the Aurora uh, movie theater. Remember were that you like happened? This, were you like, shit, this guy had some good points. No, <laughs> literally, it was just like, it had never occurred to me that, like, that could happen. And it was just like, what movie theater fuck i guess if i'm in the top where i love to sit i would be so and it's and you're just because you're like i never thought i'd have to worry about anything at the movie theater i do like mushrooms and go watch avatar you know the, yeah i didn't and then th- it was almost like this uh, very safe place was no longer a safe place and i had to think about and now you're like overcorrecting. you're like yeah. what fucked up stuff can i think of so i know well, that <laughs> Exactly. Like, I'll give you one. I'm head trying of to protect the, you if the FBI the comes here. after this episode. <laughs> get... If anything, all I would be, I mean, the one thing I think I would be able to do is like write a great manifesto to inspire somebody. It would be funny. No, I, <laughs> you I would. Some punch mine line. would not be funny at all. I'd be very serious with my mass murders. <laughs> Extremely. No, I'd be pretty funny with it. Actually. <laughs> Well, you are like, I feel like you are the person that like, if you saw you on stage, you're a very happy person, very friendly, yeah. but like, you are like, oh, they're definitely, there has to be like, the pendulum has to swing the other way. Oh, I'm an aggressively violent drunk. And now sure. it makes yeah. sense. Now, <laughs> I'm I guess, working on it though. We're, we're getting a lot No, better. I definitely have anger, anger issues that I try to work on. That's the whole point of like, you say like, this is a self-help. It's like, I started this because I was like, shit, I got to figure out some of my problems that I have. Oh, dude, I had to like force myself into having an anger problem when I was a kid. You were like a cop. Like, what do you mean fu- by that? I was a pussy, a fucking capital P, cap- capital F, the war of the rhymes with the maggot, you know, the one that we can't say no more. I mean, the king of the maggots. And uh, so, like, I was like one of the only white kids uh, in my school. I got fucked with a lot, especially for being like a Howley kid. And like, my best friend at the time is, uh, his name was Thor, and he was another white kid. But like he was tough and like he would fucking like his stand up. Thor. If your name's Thor and you're a pussy, then like yeah, well fucking I think yeah, his his yeah his his uh his home life is a little different than mine. We'll put it that way. And I think uh my when my mom dug out, my dad was almost a little bit like, oh I'm gonna take you. I mean hey guys, come on, it's all good. And like oh, it was like I had to play the dad and the mom part there. So he would when he would yell at us, he would like do it in like a cerebral way. It wouldn't just be like never got drunk and flipped out or anything like that. Never you know screamed or anything. But fucking Thor would like, he also like knew how to, he had an older brother that taught him how to fight and shit. My dad like showed me how to box a little bit, but I just, I remember like, dad, I don't want to, I could just, I want to learn how to talk so that I don't have to. You know. I'm, I was the same way. Yeah. Well, I got, I remember getting beat up a couple of times and being like, fuck this. Like you need to like, I remember being this one. I remember like, I don't lose, I don't care about being white. Like you can just whatever. I, I'm a Howley. Okay. He's like, yeah, well, fuck, I fucking hate Howley's. And he was like, yeah, go over on the other side of the school, the, the field. I'm like, and then one day I'm like, fuck this. And like, had to think about like, I think, about, I think I thought about my mom or something like that and got like as mad as I could and like did that yeah, fucking like, where you're crying as you're doing it too. And like, how did it go up? I did what did he fucking kid didn't pick on me anymore. And uh, I'm ringing now. Uh, you did. Kid didn't pick on me anymore, which is great. But then like, you know, I got tall. That was the other thing is like, when you're like a, like a kind of a, chubby taller white kid every fucking every time you go to like a new school or like a new town or something like that every kid you're just like what are you big for nothing or let's let's test you out huh? i'm like mm. why can't they just be a fucking a tall fat white kid like why does everyone be oh you must be good at fighting eh? let's, let's, let's scrap right now i'm like this sucks and then when you just kind of get where to the point where you're like yeah let's fucking fight they'll be like nah 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 i was just messing around was but you're like you have to almost get to that point where you so you had to like teach yourself to be like angry gra- yeah okay. and also and even that's backfires too because i do get like i'm i care too much about the howly shit where i'll like i'll fucking like i do my friends will do it to me and i'm like i'll feel it and i'm like they're fucking trying to they're trying to mess with you 
Well, that must be a weird thing, like coming to Massachusetts, that like just growing up and being white and having it be like racist towards like being hated for your skin color yeah, when you're white. You, you get it though. That's the weird thing is like, you, you take like Hawaiian history in like mm -hmm. fourth grade and you're like, oh shit, that's really how it happened. Yeah. Fuck. Okay, that makes sense. Because I remember there'd be like adults that would like just be drunk in like the parking lot of like this, you know, whatever fucking grocery store we're at. Like, fuck you, you dumb fucking little Howley. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what Howley means. Yeah, shit yeah. like that. And then you get older and you're like, you almost have this like, I understand why I'm treated this way. Oh, I sympathize with this. Does that make you understand racism better on other fronts? Absolutely. But it's also like, it also lets me, I guess the, the only thing that, it, uh, thank you very much. The only back uh, firing, I guess, for me is like, that I, cause everyone, I guess the idea is you, if you're white, it, whatever privilege you've had almost cancels out the, uh, mm -hmm. that people can be racist to you. And I'm the one guy that's like, no, let's look at everyone's specific situation. Being poor and white is a lot different than being rich and white. I mean, I think that, that that's the only thing I'm like, dude, you, it, when it comes to the Caucasian specifically, or also Asians too, uh, wealth disparities are fucking huge in those two specific areas. Yeah. And, you know, it's not talking, I, yeah, being white and rich is fucking great. I think being white and poor is not bad. It's pretty good, actually, but yeah, man, to be like, I suddenly, to be caught up in those arguments every now and then, it's like, come on, he is not the same as fucking Thurston Howell the Third over here. No, it's it's a rich guy from Gilgan's Island for your younger uh, oh, audience members. Look there. at that, nice reference. I didn't even get that. I know. When did you? How old were you when you realized what that was? Racism. It's, it's, well, like you were like you didn't even know what a Howley was at one point, like third grade probably. Yeah, whatever third grade was. And then uh, afterward, I don't know. That's the other thing is like, it's, it, I mean, it sucks to do, but I almost did become like a, like a, like a, like a howly Uncle Tom, where I would just be like, I would like try to be like, I'd hang up with my Hawaii, my local friends. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, let's, oh, there's a new boy, a white kid that came to our school. I'm going to, I'm going to fuck, fuck you fucking dumb howly and like slap. And like, I would try to get the kid like to double down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like almost like, you can't call me howly. I'm picking on the howly. <laughs> yeah real dumb stupid high school shit but but that is a and college too i did it i did it in maui a bunch but there were only two in your school no no, no. there was more than two but more like two. it was yeah me and thor were like the, we were like in our grade at least yeah 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 it was probably like four four or five in our grade but those were the we were the two that like that's the other thing is if you were just like you just hung at the computer lab you were fine not fine but like it wasn't gonna hit you as bad and you're like you weren't having a great time at like that that was the thing is like I was a loser in school like I didn't have friends in school and then I'd go home and my home life wasn't like great and so I think that's where a lot of the anger is it's like I just want my fucking peace like oh, a yeah. lot of my anger is just like can't people just under like I just like I just want a time where it's like I can have a little bit of peace for sure you know I got that eventually too I remember like when like my home life finally settled down and kind of my mom got sober and was doing her own thing and everything. That was when, like, I remember it was when they... The How Nintendo, old were you when your mom got sober? Like, 14, 13 or 14. So you understood what was going on. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I've got... that watched her get the fuck beaten out of her by, like, drug dealers and shit. It was super, super, like, bad, bad times. But when she, I'm proud of her to this day, though. Yeah. Is she good now? Yeah, she's been sober for, like, 14 years. Oh, wow. Still a huge bitch, sir. but... <laughs> God damn me. I mean, At we, least he's we, not turning back to drugs. Exactly. She fucking, she drinks now, which I'm always like, fucking, you, just, I, one of the most annoying, not even like a terrible, just annoying drunk where I'm like, I hate when you get trashed. Yeah. God, it's the worst, but she's doing a lot better. Her life is overall like in a, so, I mean, she was probably, I mean, she was close. I thought she was dead for like a couple, like a month out of my life, probably. It was that bad. She was getting legit. I think she was like uh, investigated by the FBI for like a bunch of credit card, not credit card fraud, but. Yeah, uh, check fraud or something like that. But yeah, it was also getting hunted by like Mexican drug dealers. It was an insane fucking life for her. And then she ended up. Like, were you aware? You were aware yeah, of all this going on. My dad's a pretty open guy, so like every now and then he would like have a couple too many drinks. You know, have he's like his size Heineken. He would like we'd be barbecuing on were Sunday. Were they together? No, the, no, not. Oh, my, my mom bailed a long time ago, so it was just one. It was just me and my dad, but he would like you know kind of like she would try to be in her life. We talked to her on the phone and stuff mm -hmm. and. You'd, but you kind of, it would be these crazy situations you'd hear from other people. Yeah, she ain't doing too good. She's trying to help out. And he would like have a couple of, like, buddy, fucking, if he'd be pissed at her, he was like, you know, your fucking mom, like, I hate her, but she's, uh, she's not doing too good. And like, that would be how it would come out. And it's, you know, 
maybe not the coolest thing to do to like a 10 year old or an 11 year old but no but it's like you were talking like the opposites like that's uh, like that's the opposite of how it usually is like Absolutely. at least with me like my mom would be like let me spill some shit on your dad type you know what i mean oh yeah and th- th- i feel like that's probably usually the normal way yeah well, even you know? my because i would see my dad was he was legit like hey man i i don't i don't know if your mom's alive we're pretty sure she is but like it's like what's the point in shit because she she was not even like it's not even like the one parent can be better than the other one it's just like oh you, your kids love their mom when they're that age too you want to have yeah, them of in course, your life a little of bit of course but, man there's a point where it's like i mean like Dude, my godmother had an episode of Dog the Bounty Hunter about her. That's wait, how. Wait, you gotta tell me yeah, this story. So fucking, <laughs> you gotta tell me this like story. Like my mom's best friend, uh, the lady that, like when they were like getting the most fucked up when they were doing the, like her house got burnt down by meth dealers and shit. Fucking this just crazy lady. Did and, dog catch her? Yeah. I, so, no. So dog. The, the, I remember like we were, we, my mom was all sober and stuff, and I was like I was staying with her for a minute. And like, we're, it was when dog would come on, it was when it was on. Mm-hmm. And she like fucking screams, oh my God. And like, I come on, she's like, what? She's like, eh. I'm not gonna say the name, but it's her. And I'm like, oh, and, I'm like, and we would just sit and watch the entire episode. And like the guy that uh, she was with at the time, they were just like, they were just meth boyfriend, meth girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, he had, they, they'd stolen like a big Buddha statue from outside of a restaurant. <laughs> I don't know what they thought they were gonna do. It was just like, and like, fucking ridiculous and the guy jumps out on his bond and uh they find her right away and like she's just like at the house and she's like what the fuck oh, god damn it hey that piece of-. and just she rats him out immediately <laughs> just snitches immediately <laughs> and uh like we're, we're, she's in handcuffs and like smoking a cigarette the whole time <laughs> it's fuck and dude the best line in the whole fucking show is uh they finally catch him and he's just pissed off at her they're, they're, they're trying to find the buddha statue like just tell us where the statue is so we can bring it back and the guy's like, man, I don't even want, I never even wanted to smoke that, that, that bullshit. Talking about meth. He's like, God, she's the one that showed it to me. She's the one that fucking brought it into my life. And he goes, it's taken down better men than you. <laughs> and, I, and, but it's, and she pokes her head out the window with the window or like, part I changed up. my mind on her. I like her now. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and then, yeah, they fucking get arrested in separate jails. That was the thing is like, you bring her to the, the one in the East, I'll bring her to the one in the West, you know, let's just not even deal with that. Yeah. And uh, it was a, it was a sad slash. Like, Did you ever oh, see like, her after that? No, but she follows me on Facebook and likes a lot of my stuff. And <laughs> really sweet girl, really a lady. God, definitely not a girl no more. Definitely. You can't be a girl getting arrested no, by but dog, I, the just, bounty. Also. No, but very <laughs> surprise, surprise, really into Jesus. Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Huh? Yeah. Not Buddha. No. She didn't find. No. She didn't find Buddha. No, <laughs> man. I'm sure she's uh, actually actively avoiding Buddha. She ever sees him on the street, she's like, "Oh shit, oh, he's gonna recognize me from the dog, the bounty hunter." Ah. Oh my god. Yeah, living in uh, Alabama. I mean, yeah, to go to Hawaii to Alabama is a fucking move. Where I'm like, okay, that's a uh, that's a choice. I yeah. always think that fucking Massachusetts or Hawaii to Mass is bad. But when did you move out of Hawaii? 2015. At this point. How old are you? 25 back then. You had never left no, Hawaii? 24 back then. Uh, I'd, so I'd, no, not the state. I moved from the Big Island to Maui, which in its own way is a pretty big, like, Big Island. So the Hawaii is like, uh, I think it's like seven islands total. Oahu is the main one. It's one of the smaller islands, but it's got the, the city on it. It's got the most population. It's got the most shit. There's a water park over there. Mm. There's a, it's where the Pro Bowl was played for uh, a long time there's just a bunch going on there. yeah and uh it's also got some really beautiful stuff but it's a smaller island that it's really overrun by tourism a lot of just city it's i don't know i, I was never a fan and then maui's like uh it's got a little bit it's got like you know big towns and stuff like that a little bit more going on really good surf and then the big island like it's the biggest one mm-hmm. every all the islands total can fit into the, the big island like twice it's fucking enormous Damn. but it's the newest island so it's the least eroded it has the least like newest island that formed yeah so it's like it does. It, there's no erosion. So when did not, it form? I think a hundred. I don't know, like a million years ago or okay, something. Like that. Okay. The other ones formed like a million and a half years know, ago. This is for listeners. We just smoked a joint, and this is how stupid my high brain is. I was like, the new island. Like, did they build it like ten years ago? Oh <laughs> like, god. I mean, you, you don't sound like uh, you don't sound too far off from a lot of terrorists that I've talked to. <laughs> Can you swim under the island? <laughs> Fucking idiots. But yeah, it, it's not no, a, but it's the newest one yeah. out of. So that's like it's just like the rocks that like yeah, like whatever the foundation of a normal island is. A lot of it's covered in that shit. So you're like, 
this looks like the moon. Like it doesn't. Oh, that's it's pretty cool. It is, but it's not Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So when you're going on vacation, you're like, what the fuck? This is ridiculous. And the whole every town's like an hour away. So it's, you're just driving through a lot of nothing, a bunch of like forest, a bunch of jungle and shit. And then like, I don't know. I, I grew up there, but it was mm -hmm. definitely not a lot going on. Grew up in a town that Dog the Bounty Hunter frequented quite a bit. So that just says a Did lot. Did he about, live in Hawaii? Yeah, that's where the whole show took place. Oh. That's how that? I had no idea. I watched it when I was younger, but I had no idea it always took place they in Hawaii. They would do a couple episodes in like Colorado or something like that. Mm. For the most, the whole, the thing it makes that, sense. Yeah, the whole thing about the show was it, it's in Hawaii. Yeah, because how you can't get out, like it's, you can't run away. Like I, you can always catch someone. Sure, but I didn't even know if that was what they were going for. They were just like, it looks pretty, and fucking Hawaiian people are interesting. You know? She got big titties and he got yeah. fake hair. So fucking thank God she's dead though. Oh my God, what a piece of shit those two were. That whole family's garbage. Garbage. Yeah. Yeah, here's the other thing. The kind a lot of white trash in Hawaii. Not a lot. Some, a little bit. There's a couple of people that moved there because of a song. You know, <laughs> for the most part, though, it's like rich white people and like locals, mm. which are like uh, Hawaiian, Filipinos. Tongans, uh, Samoans, uh, and the Chinese. segregation is real. So a little bit, but everyone today? mingles. No, everyone mingles for the most part. Even, you know I mean? But like today, if you were in your situation growing up today, do you think you'd go through the same stuff? Going to the same school, probably. But like, if you go to like a like a, a private school or like a better school, it's just, it's kind of where you're at. The town I was in is still to this day. It's just a small. It's on the southern part of the island. It's one of the most isolated places on the island. It's an old sugarcane plantation town. So like, there's families that have just never left there. It's a little bit territorial, but. It helps when you're good at sports and you can people yeah. go, oh, at least you're that kid from the fucking thing. So you wanted to leave because like <sighs> I wanted to be liked there more than anything. And then that did it happens here. I was homecoming king in high school. So oh, I got wow. a, a little bit of acceptance there. Oh wow. But did some theater shows. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't believe I showed you that tape. That was uh was No, really you had the me. one joke. You had the one joke. Oh, I'm just more of just like Fuck ah. it. oh God. Yeah. We're, we're bringing that one back. Bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> um but it was, I didn't even want to leave. It was just, I was like, all right, there's nothing for me here. Like, mm -hmm. it literally was just like, I guess I can date the girl I wanted to date in my junior year or in like buy a truck, but I'm good. And also, just, I wanted to do stand up. So, like, going to Maui was one of those, like, I don't know, maybe there'll be something out there. Maybe, yeah. the, and like, legit, there was a, a, like a radio open mic that I did the first time ever and won $25 coming in second place and came back the next week and won it. Oh, yeah. That's a good pretty. Time. Those are the things that keep you going, you know, like, I fucking fucked my ego. I thought I was a comedy god. Mm. I was like, I, I remember, I literally, so I came back, and the second, third time I did it, I won it again. So I'm like, dude, comedy's the, easy. I just made a, I made $125 in three weeks, doing like five minutes at a time. Yeah. And then the fourth time I did it, I was like so air. I came in there like nothing prepared, bombed my dick off, bombed so bad. And then, like, literally, was like, what the fuck do you guys? And I just won this thing last week and, like, got off the stage and got into my truck and, like, burned out in the parking lot and drove <laughs> off. It's so Peeled gay. off. Yeah. Yeah. But there wasn't a lot of good comedy. You didn't. No, it doesn't matter. I was just air. I yeah. was so. Cocky. You you even you admitted before the podcast that like your stuff was like hack beforehand. Extremely hack. Yeah. It's, I also, I didn't learn how to do good comedy. I learned how to kill, which mm. is very different. It is very different. And it's like, man, killing feels good. So, like, I'm just going to do local references and, like, talk about comedians that were on the show or, like, whatever. You know, I'm going to just try to make it as specific to this audience as I can, which I learned uh, didn't help me out a lot when I got to Boston. And people were like, we like good written jokes. And I'm like, fuck, I'm not great at that. Or even good for that matter. But... The, yeah, that, the Boston does humble you quick with the mics. Like the first mic you hit in Boston where you bomb, it just humbles you. Oh, it like, sucks. Because I did kill Tony for my first time, my second time. It's not an open mic, though. No, but I did. Well, so my first, the yeah, first it's a, real. It's a giant crowd actually there to see comedy. Exactly. Though. So then I had, so I was like, that was my first set ever. And then I go to like Sally O'Brien's. Oh, I bought my dick off there my first time. And I was like this is the worst thing ever like i'm not a comedian like you know because oh, like if man. you could do a minute well it's different than doing five minutes bad well, the best like, thing is man the amount of people that i've seen that were like i hated how many open mics would have like this open this not open this like uh inside joke feel thing to where people are like and i'd be like i don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about why, are they, why yeah. are they all laughing and the amount of people that like that was their jam i don't see any of these motherfuckers anymore no. I don't know, even before the pandemic they all quit and it's, every it's time just I, hang it was for a hang every time they quit though i'm like gosh Fucking yes. But the, we don't so, need you. 
so like I might be moving to New York and it's the first time I'm leaving and it's crazy like now I feel like I can do good sets in Boston and I didn't feel that and it's like it's a scary thing to like I'm scared to leave home. Like I'm scared to move. Why you're like 25, right? 20, I'm 23. 23. Jesus like, Christ. but I, 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 like, it's weird to like go out on your own, especially when you there's comfort in it. Like, I, I have comfort in my life right now. Yeah, everyone. I dipped out when I was 17. Literally the second I was like, I can get out of my parents. I'm like, that's happening. That's not. But I have this. It's like, like, yeah, a bed and like all yeah. that shit. Yeah, I don't have to pay rent. That's fine. How much? So do you have anything saved up? Have you done anything with not paying rent? I uh, see I no I don't okay. I put it all into this I put it all I lived off of it because I got I got I lost my job six months before quarantine because of a whole shit with they let me go but they were like we'll give you unemployed it was like it was a okay. bit so I got unemployment and I had savings and then like over quarantine I used those savings for like the trips to New York and like to get the podcast equipment and like investing in your future exactly huh? so now i don't have savings anymore i just like literally it's like i just got a car uh, I, because my other car wouldn't work so i got a car and it's like after i have no more savings then i get this thing where i might have well, to move do to new it. york who cares i know but it's i'm it's that's, so i mean i don't know you can always move back home that's the other thing you don't have to fucking, you don't have to it's not this like if i it's always gonna be there and fucking yeah you're 20 get out of there you fucking loser i need that yeah i need i need a pep talk i need a pep talk to live with your mom i know christ i know it's affecting how you think about getting laid i'm sure i'm man your comedy is probably going to be better imagine if you could be the guy that hosts like the the chill after the show you know what i mean let's go back to my spot and smoke some bowls and you know it's like you fucking loser come hang out with us god damn get over to new york uh, oh you or me me you yeah <laughs> she's exactly. yelling at me too oh yeah f- f- but i do need the pep talk because i am a pussy like i am a pussy like that like i'm good at pushing myself to a point uh, not that far apparently i mean moving out of your mom's house is like day one adult you buy a pack of cigarettes and then you move into a shitty dorm uh, you, you have siblings i have a younger brother see i'm an only child and I, that's not an excuse but it's something that I didn't, I have to come to terms with where it's like life is, it is easier when you're an only child because you're the only person who gets like attention. So like when you sure. get the focus, it's easier to be like, just like want comfort, not be like, I have to outperform someone else. Not that you're always in competition, but you're like, yeah, but didn't you ever like watch movies and shit? <laughs> when I was a kid, I watched like almost famous. And I was like, God, I want that to be my life. And everyone be like, you're not going to do that if you live with your mom and dad. No, I know, but it, it's anything cool, true. like you're, do you, they never go back. Like super bad was even like, I remember watching that and be like, God, I want to have that, 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 you know, that sort of a shenanigans filled whatever. Yeah. And even that it's like, yeah, they go back to their, their parents' house, but they, it, the, the whole thing is like, you're not supposed to go back to mom and dad's. That's never cool. That's never it's fun. Not. That's it's never not. rocking, you know? It's not. And it's, it's never, drip is the, the the kids in your pot and you're listening to this say <laughs> i think there's a thing the first time you have to pay rent oh, is a geez. weird thing it's a weird th- okay but it is a weird thing when you've never done it before sure yeah you should be doing it you should have been paying to your mom rent the entire time you've been living there that would have been the damn decent thing to do <laughs> it's a leeching off her like a <laughs> god i said leech <laughs> You know, a, an animal that sucks blood off. Of, you know, you are gonna be a good dad. I'm gonna be great dad. It's gonna be so easy. I'm not gonna hit him or anything. Probably. I'll spank him. But... A boy, maybe, but definitely not gonna hit my daughter. You don't hit your cats. I've <laughs> wanted to. Bitch. Fucking wanted to. Cheating the fuck out of it. It's like hitting a little dog though. Like you fuck. It's one that beats like a cocker spaniel. It's like I don't really know. Cool. Whoa, there's a tough guy over here. Well, we're talking about when you were driving off bridges and like blowing them up and wanting to kill people. Not wanting to, just understanding how I, easy it is. I have this funny. I don't know why I find it so funny. The Don't idea of beating animals up. Whoa, just, ne- I would never do it. I would never do it. Just like you would 
never do those things. Yeah. But just like I think blowing up a bunch so, of people is way less fucked up than beating so, up animals. It's just such it's the worst thing imaginable. Just to like pu- like it's so horrible. They're so like See, I, have, I have fantasies about like dogs trying to attack me and just fucking them up. Oh, if a dog but like it's just such a horrible idea that a, it's the comedian in me that it makes me laugh. Like walking down I was walking down the street with my friend in New York and we saw like a horse. Like what if we just went and beat the fuck out of that no, horse. Well, right I mean, that's now. not I mean not beat the fuck, but like someone got arrested for punching a police horse in the face. And it's like <laughs> that's hilarious. It's just the idea of it. It's so it's funny. Very funny. And that's where my darkness and my thoughts come out. There you go. I mean, even like a dog. Like I'm not gonna kick your cat. No, but I'll But sm- just the idea of you angry one night just being like beating the shit out of the cat. Anger. Yeah, I've always thought about that a million times. You don't have to hit a cat, they just go. <laughs> they fucking they scatter it's like man it doesn't take a it's like snake venom you don't need a lot you don't need a lot my mouth is dry as fuck i'm gonna go get some more water yeah, why don't you i'll get you water why don't you oh, rant while you. i make myself another drink <laughs> i will rant tell us about the Ani, new hip-hop you, <laughs> the new uh, hip-hop what the kids are listening uh, to Ani, you need to yell at me now on why i need to do it yeah i mean we've already talked about this a bunch i saw you do comedy in new york and you fit there dude like this is resistance you know that this is resistance and it I'm an resistance. only child, yeah. and we've we've had this discussion of how old were you when you moved out? When you paid rent for the first time? When I paid rent for the first time, you were eighteen. All right, Sonny was no, eighteen. I mean, I I lived at school like you, and then I came home and and I worked full time, uh, multiple jobs for five years, mm-hmm. and then I was twenty seven, I think. But it is a scary thing to do. So you were 20. It's like I did work full time, but it is a yeah. scary like. I might first. have been 26. I can't remember if I was 26 or 27 at this point. But I mean, Sam, I I moved out of my parents' house. Uh, like I just made that decision the day before, or like two days before. Yeah. And I, I did not have anything really when I moved out because I wasn't I had something, but not a lot. And my friends, thankfully, were able to help support me for for a few months and I could stay with them and pay them rent and kind of cut a deal. And then guess what? I had to move out spur of the moment fucking again. Every time I've ever moved has always been spur of the moment. That is true. You do. And I've never been a hundred percent ready for it, but we've made it work and you'll make it work because if you really want to do something like this podcast, this is like episode 70, dude. Like yeah. Yeah, also episode you're 70. Like- You've had the easiest life in the world. You're fucking Mr. Peter Pan. It's like, oh my God, Excuse am I going to be stressed I am out? I'm not going to get easier. I, I, I'm not going to go in. Your <laughs> argument is it's so easy living with no, my I, mom. No, it is. That is. So <sighs> when you were 18, what what made you were just like, I need to get out of my house. I need to be on my own. I need to, I'm not staying in fucking Ocean View, Hawaii, dude. I mean, literally, it was like, I need to, I'm going to go on a skyscraper. Let me fucking like, I've never been on like a subway, you know? Yeah. Let me go live. Let me. I, this, I want to go to Red Sox game. I want to go see the Patriots someday. I want to go do. A, I want to do stand up comedy. I want to live my life. You moved across the whole country. Like you moved to Massachusetts. Yes. Like the, first, like the first fu- it was Maui. First it was just like, dude, let's go fucking just. I hate man. I love my hometown, but it's like I would hate living there now. That would not be a good place to be. And uh, yeah, dude, the living somewhere where there was a nightlife was insane. Living somewhere where there was like girls that I'd never met before that I could hook up with was insane. Shit like that. It was just a whole a whole new world is a uh, yeah the flying arrow. Well, it doesn't today. come from anything comfortable. You know that. I and do know that. And I it is point. resistance. Have you ever read The War of Art? Nope. Not a I mean I, I don't read philosophy book. What's the war of art? That's the one the where, war of uh, art. Stephen Pressfield. It's not the the art of war. Okay. Which is by I've read Sun Tzu. Uh, I've read Shun Tzu's The Art of War. Yeah, but this is the War of Arts by Stephen Pressfield, and it's about like resistance like how your brain is the thing that holds you back from like making a decision like it's not anything else like someone's not like literally being like you can't like yeah my wife talks about this it's a, it's a business thing where it's like the upper the upper management syndrome of like you're your biggest person doubting yourself and you're you set restrictions and blah, blah, but it's blah, blah, true blah. yeah f- okay fine i feel like that's just you should have that thought when you're tripping on mushrooms. You're like, God, why am I fucking doing all this shit? Ah, uh, you know what? I really am. Yeah, and you just, you think about what you do with your day, and it's like, damn, that was I played fucking 2K for like 45 minutes. Like, there's just shit where you're like, why am I just wait? And you're like, oh, it makes you feel better, yada yada. But 
No, I hate, I don't like, and I have the past two, I've been wasting more time than I should because I don't like wasting time. I like when I wake up early, I meditate, I do yoga, I go for a run, I write, but I still catch myself staying up, like staying up late, waking up late, and then like laying in bed, wanting to play my fucking PS5. It's like, but I feel better when I do the other shit. I just... I'm it's, a easy, pussy. it's easier to do the other one. You were talking about like. That's what I did this morning. I ran six miles in 61 minutes. We uh, That's that's great. Fucking 10 minute miles the entire time. I would run with. I would do that with you if you ever wanted to run. I don't think you could keep up. I do eight minute miles. And I do five. I do eight minute miles for five, six miles almost four days a week. All right, you can we can, we can run together. That's right? fine. I know. I shit. I act. I am a but runner. Was, you man, can't. Running doesn't work. Fuck. I know, dude. I'll How lift up that? my shirt. I run that, and this is my body. Did you do push-ups? Yeah, I bench. I like. I work out, and this is What's just your diet. I don't even eat that unhealthy. I just have bad genetics. No, I'm pretty sure you must be eating. You drink a lot of soda, huh? No, I don't. For real. I mean, I eat pretty healthy. I Do you have Google Fit? Do you download it so you can track all your movements? No, your I, to, to I do don't that. do that. I, but I do, it's, I do work out hard. I just, my body has always been bigger. It's like I'm a I'm a thick chick. I'm like a curvy chick. Sure. But, of but, guys. Yeah. but uh, it's, my knees are going to be fucked because I do run eight to nine minute miles consistently for long periods. And I still look like this. That's insane. I yeah. just got under 10 minutes. So I'm like, I'm a fucking God. I'm like the fucking greatest thing to ever walk. The That's earth. Gr- no under 10 minutes Pretty is crazy. Huge. Cause I've been trying, like when I first started running in college, I would smoke two backwoods to the face with weed. Yeah. I'd run for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Don't care how fast. 10 minutes and then i'd smoke a third backwood and be like i'm a runner oh yeah and i would do that every day no matter how shitty i felt no matter if i was sick i would run 10 minutes but i'd smoke two backwoods and a backwood after and then i was like this i can't call myself a runner once that was easy so i moved it up mm-hmm. and now i smoke a joint and i'll run five six miles oh yeah i always take a bonger before i head out of the house but it's it, it is a long it's a long process like you've been doing comedy a lot longer than me yeah. But like I've been running lo- longer than you. Like sure. running I've been working on. Sure. You want comedy though. Like you I mean what you're doing you you're hitting it harder than I was when I first started. There's a I mean that was the, that's the only regret but I had. You were was, doing theaters. Yeah, but it, and you thought you were better but than But I'd you only were. done comedy probably like fucking 30 or 40 times yeah. at, up to that point, which you know, when I, I also I didn't never bombed at the big shows, thank God, but when I got out here it was like, man, you are not as equipped to be a good comedian as you think you are. Did it make you want to quit at first? Absolutely. Uh, no, it just made me fucking yeah, not even quit, but it was more of just a disappointment in myself of like, you fucking idiot, dude, come on. And it was it was a realization of like I had to lose a little bit of the confidence which sucked and that definitely fucked in my head for the first year, but once I figured out how to kill again, it was like, all right, we're not even kill, like learn how to do good on stage again, learn how to write where I'm like you have to write jokes that are like were you really Good. blindsided or were you in the back of your head like, I knew this shit was happening? No, completely. I think it might, I was like, you might have to, you know, do your time, which is like maybe like a year and then you'll be <laughs> fucking. Like, it, it just, yeah. you, know, you really were blindsided. Yeah. And it's just like, I, it was more because I was like, I might not be getting the stuff, but I'm good at, I was like, I'm, I know, I was like, in my, even like, I was one of the better comedians. I was fucking, I was the best out in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. I was the best out there. So it was like, <laughs> I'm good. There's like no, there's, I'm from the best in one state, then I have to at least be like the top 10 in another one. And man, it was an eye opener of like, wait, does that mean everybody in Hawaii sucks? Part of it's like, <laughs> that's part of it, but you know. Have you, have you gone back and done comedy once? Yeah. And did everyone suck? Yeah, I mean, everyone, not everybody, you know, people are like, people are good. There's like good jobs, but it's like, you don't really learn how to do certain, there's certain skills you see out here and it's like, oh, damn, this motherfucker is, you know, he's doing, uh, he's playing 3D chess while I'm over here with checkers. Yeah, but it must have helped you be able to do time. Like you just did, uh, like you can do longer spots. Like you had that ability to do like 30 minutes. Sure, absolutely. But it is it also like people, I, I see egos with people where I'm like, Man, you're terrible. But if I, I've done a 30 minute set. It's like, yeah, man. We I know you just talked to your friends. It was a uh, we, we were there. It was cool, man. But you, you get that every. I, I talk. I've had people ask me things, and it's like, yeah, I don't. I don't know what you think is going on. The mm-hmm. comedy world in the middle of the ocean, but it's not really attached to anything going on anywhere but here. So you know, shush with all that ego and shit. 
do you feel like now that it's coming back are like are you gonna hit it hard now or do you uh, feel like a t- like- i'm at a crossroads man it's my uh it's the point in life i've been debating that this is like my year of like 2020 was going to be it was it was a good everything was planned out pretty well it was going to be a fruitful year it was nice how things were turning and like i almost am like a step back from that now in terms of like yeah like, heckle fest was kind of i was getting that into a couple mm-hmm. like spots that were going to be really it was going to be really cool and now that's not a thing anymore and just you, know, it, you can't really do these these shows hoping you can make the same amount of money as you could before and it's like i don't know i i, I didn't have a career path but i had a had an idea of where things were headed. Now it's just so different where I'm like, fuck, I would, I would, I would have to do it in a very different way. And I, I, I'm probably still going to keep doing stand up, but some of the delusions of success might be fading a little bit there and might have to be settling for things. And it's just not, I don't know, man, it's, it'll, it's just going to be really, really different now. So I bet, you know, I'm, something might happen and maybe I might be able to jump back in here and make, get things to work. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to have a family in my head. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm getting at now. Is what, career path do you want to take then oh i mean something i mean ideally the fucking podcasting would be nice that's the uh that's the nice work from home uh vibe there Mm -hmm. but you know there's a million things i could do in hawaii i've done a million would you go back to hawaii oh that's what i'm doing you're moving back not right now but like in the next five years meanwhile we're looking at we're going to go house shopping while we're back there oh wow and uh you know have a kid probably the next three or four years is that crazy to think about it is but i've been thinking about it a bunch and also i'm like i'm turning 30 in august you know i've had a fucking insane life even comedy dude i've like i've got to do a lot of cool shit and i like i kick myself about lack of success a lot of times but when, I, when I, every now and then you put it you get like a, a facebook memory saying you're like wow that was pretty fucking cool yeah wow i can't believe i did wow that did man i got i did get a you you you, you know you put everything stacked up on paper and it's like don't feel bad bro like you did comedy and it was sick and it's uh you keep doing it and shit but yeah in my head i'm definitely a little more of the uh if the if you know if a great job is offered to me and you have to like yeah you, you're gonna have to work you know nights you don't mind able to do stand-up as much <sighs> ah, i got a kid on the way you know or as yeah. fucking back in the day i'd be like i will sleep on a futon for the rest of my life for pursuit of my art but, well yeah because you are on your own since you were 18 it's been like probably fight or flight not Pretty that much. you're in that now, but for a long time, and you probably just want a little bit of that calm. Well, that's you, and also I'm. I mean, the way that comedy's working, I am being. I'm being a little more realistic with my shit. Where I'm like, man, I guess that uh, I don't, you're not going to be Bill Burr sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the idea of like the, the way things happen. Now, sometimes there's a time for there's a you know a time for things to happen. There's almost a lightning and a bottle moment. And if that's not you, that's not a. You you see, I have friends where they get success or they don't get success. Or like the way things happen, and it's like there is no reason for it other than just the fucking way the wind blows. And it's disheartening sometimes. It's also super like it gets you pumped up. Like oh wow, if he did it, I can do that thing. Mm-hmm. But you can't. I, I when I was I don't know. This is the year where I was looking at a lot of self introspection. And man, I get mad at some peers of mine for no reason other than they succeed or they fuck up something. And it's like dude, chill out. Nobody cares. You know what I mean? It's all it's about jokes. Go tell jokes. Go have fun and. I yeah, I try not to be as much of a chatty bitch as the kids would say. That's a really uh, I like hearing you say that that you have the I mean, I'll talk shit with my boys, but it's, it's, uh, it's in my head, my thoughts, I got to that's where I'm like, yeah. I I love you're being talking. honest with yourself. Oh, like yeah. if you don't love something, then like and I do love it, but I don't love how much I can be bitter about it. Sometimes. And you also Benjamin buttoned it. Like you had a Benjamin yeah. Button career, like yeah you started oh, at the top like you started well put with the theaters and like you were the at the top and then just slowly you realized like what it was but it's also i think it's a little, a little bit of a big fish small pond thing yeah and it's but like, you are a good comic like yeah well, thank you i'm a great comic <laughs> fucking watch your mouth boy <laughs> 10 years in, i'm sorry you're a great comic um but it's you know i if I stayed in Hawaii, probably would have not have gotten a lot better, but I probably would have thought I was a lot better than I do now. Yeah. You are at a crossroads. You, you said you're 10 years in your relationship. Yep. And you're 10 years in comedy. 11 years, actually. 11 years in 11 comedy. 11 years in comedy. And that is like, you started them at the same time. It I is the, like 11 and a half, actually. Yeah. But that, so you were, that is, it is a crossroads of what Big you're going to pick. Oh, it's not even. I mean, would I'm, you do stand up like, like a hobby? Yeah, as a hobby. 
I would do it as, as a professional hobby. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I would, I got enough big name, not big name friends, but like friends where I'm like, Hey, you want to come out and do a show in Hawaii? Yeah. I'll sell it out and I'll open for you. That kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, would you ever want to open a club? Yeah, definitely. That's a dream right there, but that's a little harder. That's a little more of like, uh, you want to be a Hawaiian Rick Jenkins? God, that's no. First of all, he doesn't own a club. He owns a clubhouse that people that like to pretend they do comedy hang out at. I'm kidding, everybody. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's I'm comedy. Kidding. Yeah, we're telling shit. No, but yeah. would you want to own a, a cl- an actual club? Yes, yeah. an actual club that like that's the whole thing. I wouldn't do it for like a local comedy scene. It would be like oh, touring be, comedians. Touring comedians will be open like three days a week. It won't even be a comedy club. It'll be like, hey, can I? Like, I'm gonna talk to a restaurant or a place. I'll be like, hey, do you guys have a back room? I can rent out on these days and that'll be the thing. And that'll be its own, you know, because like the idea of like having my own establishment that has to be open Monday, Tuesday, like that's just not, that's not a Hawaii works. You know, people have tried and failed it miserably every single time. And I feel like I just understand where it's like, here's what it, ha- it can't just be like a full time. It has to be like a, a concept of a comedy club. You know, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a room you do comedy and you call it a comedy club. Yeah. One of those, th- not even like to that extent. I would like to have a, uh, I mean, the, the best way to be like it is have like a restaurant that you can just like almost be like, All right, let's open this together as a partner. Have a back room, like yeah. a big like banquet room. Well, you know what I actually here's, here's what, what I always thought about doing is like is if you can just get the liquor license and have the bar and uh, and have like shitty food intentionally, like really, hey, we have mm-hmm. a pizza like a and anyone can operate like a Costco pizza quality pizza. Yeah, we have a hot dog thing and popcorn. And that's, and we can, we'll put some fucking, you know, whatever, but it's, it's, we, it can be prepared. Oh, fucking sloppy Joe's. That would be another one that would be good. I, if you just had pizza, hot dogs, sloppy Joe. Yeah. I would never pick the sloppy Joe. Really? Here's the thing about sloppy Joe. That's the easiest one to like, we're just like, oh, just make a fucking, a, you make a, a pot of the meat. But you know who I mean? wants to be at a comedy show? Eating no, no, no. Shit. So here's the other thing. Fucking food is not offered at the comedy show. There's like a, a patio outdoor. And it's like fucking restaurants over here. Deep throat that hot dog there. and then you can go in and laugh. Yeah. Well, so there's the thing. The restaurant's not open. There's, you can't order food during the show. That'd be another thing. It's like it's open like, you know, four hours before the show or five hours. And so, like, yeah, come grab a bite, hang out, get a couple drinks. If you buy it, tickets to the show, you get like deals on uh, everything while you're there. And then it's like, all right, hour, half an hour before last call before, uh, you know, with food. And it's like, you know, no food inside the performance area. But, you're, but you can get drinks while you're in there. Yeah. And I think that would, I hate fucking uh, clubs where they have food in there. But you got to make money with the food. Mm-hmm. And if you were to do, yeah, something where, the, I mean, it costs nothing. Anyone can make it. You can charge, you know, a good little amount there. And you can throw some veggies and some bullshit on there. Right. And yeah, that would be a great comedy club. Make sure a room maybe like 100, 100, 150. Nothing insane because it's like, I don't. You have thought about this. Oh, ton. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I mean, everyone, everyone has that thought when you just go to like, when you're at clubs or you get booked somewhere and it's like, man, this place fucking blows. And it's, you, you see what they're doing wrong. That was one, man, there was one, where they call, it was not a club, but they call themselves a comedy club. Just, they had the TVs on the entire time. I'm like, this is day one shit here. Yeah. Stuff like that. Just how you do like a, a green room, a waiting area. Also, I mean, it's Hawaii, so I feel like it wouldn't be too hard to almost have a, uh, like a, a much smaller door and it's like hey man we're, we'll put you up while you're here fucking mm. you know we'll fly yeah. we'll fly you out and put you up but you're probably gonna make like 500 to show hey sam yeah sorry we're just like pretty over time just wanted to give you a heads up if you want to thank you very much that was a good place to end beautiful what are we at two and a half hours how far how long did we go like about an hour and a half oh beautiful. perfect well Thank you so much for doing this. Of course, man. I love to spread the knowledge and that's how you was... get the fuck out of your mom's house. <laughs> yeah, I needed that. No, this was actually, this was a really great conversation. I had a great conversation on your podcast. It was a good that time, That was the first man. time that we like. I got to actually talk, hang out. Yeah, and, that was yeah. A, and this was an awesome conversation too. I'm happy we got to do this. I'm glad you came by, big guy. What's, uh, do you want to plug your podcast? I'd love to. That's stuff. the uh, the Sunny Side podcast on everything. Apple Podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, all the big ones. Uh, I'll be in Maui, Hawaii, on uh, May 17th over at The Playground in Ma'alaya. It's going to be a good time. We'll also be doing a special edition of Hecklefest featuring oh, local dope. Hawaiian performers. So make sure you, you check it out if you're there. Tickets are selling out quick. Uh, buy your tickets in twos and fours because that's how they're doing it for COVID. So <laughs> you're such a professional. I try to be. I've been <laughs> drinking quite a bit today. But... <laughs> well, you guys can listen to Bucked Up. You know, you're listening to it already. Yeah, follow Goodbye. me on Instagram too. Follow him on Instagram. Unfollow me. Follow me. Shots <laughs>